my sisters. It's another beautiful day. It's so awesome having you this morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Esther Preparation Room, where women of like passion gather together, aligning with the spirit of the Most High God to get into, into worship and communion with the King of Glory. And we want, to, we want the life of God to extend through our lives, through the church of God, and through the nations in the name of Jesus. As we gather here this morning, we know the King of Glory is here with us, and we're excited, we are delighted, we are privileged to be worshiping him this morning. So we're going to go right into worship. We're going to be singing praise from the depth of our hearts. We're going to be blessing the King of Glory. Psalm 101 to 5 says, Shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him, sing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. Acknowledge that the Lord, he is God. He is our creator. We are his people. We are the people of his, past, his pasture. Enter into his gate with thanksgiving. Enter into his court with praise. Give thanks unto him. Praise his holy name. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever. He is faithful to each generation, from generation to generation. Daddy, we love you. Daddy, we worship you. Oh, Lord, we honor you. Good morning, Daddy. Bali, humble, zone, We worship you this morning. We exalt you, Lord. There is none like unto you. There is none beside you. There is none like you. Lord, you are. You are. You are the King of glory. You are the only righteous God. Daddy, we bless you. We give you praise. We give you honor and adoration in the name of Jesus. First Thessalonians 5, 18 says, be thankful. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is the will of God for you. Oh, Lord, Daddy, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We give you praise. Psalm 7, 17 says, I will thank the Lord because he is a just God. He is a faithful God. He is a righteous God. I will sing praises unto the Lord, the most high God. I will sing praises to the name of the Lord, the most high God. Daddy, we give you praise. We give you honor. We exalt you, Lord. Psalm 107 verse 1 says, give thanks to the Lord. For he is good, his faithful love endures forever from generation to generation to generation. Daddy, we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you adoration. You are a faithful God. You are a faithful God. We will continue to offer our sacrifice of praise unto him who is able to do and to will of his good pleasure in us. Daddy, we give you praise. We give you praise. Let us begin to magnify the name of the Lord. His mercies are constant. Steadfast love is new every morning. Daddy, we give you praise. We worship the Lord. We give you honor. Eli We give you adoration. We give you praise. We give you adoration. We worship. We worship. We worship. Thank you, Daddy. We are so grateful for all you have done for us, for the things we can lay our hands on, for the things we can't even see. Daddy, we worship you for it. We worship you for it. Thank you for all you have done. Thank you for all you have done. Let us begin to express gratitude. Uh, let us be, be come before him with a thankful heart this morning. Let us shout with joy unto the Lord. Worship the Lord, all ye earth. Worship the Lord with all gladness. Worship the Lord as he enlarges your coast. Daddy, we give you praise. We give you honor. We give you adoration. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let us begin to thank God for setting us free. 
because we are no longer under the bondage of condemnation. We are no longer under the curse of law. We are set free. For Romans 8 to says, for the law of the spirit of life, in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. What a privilege. Oh Lord, thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Daddy, because you will make this word to come to pass in our lives, so oh God. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of the sin, of sin and death. We are free. We are free. We are free to worship. We are free to bow down. Daddy, we worship you. We worship you. We give you praise. Let us begin to declare. The mighty power of God is at work in you. The mighty power of God is at work in you. Is transforming you in the name of Jesus. That mighty power is working. Is working. Is renewing your mind in the name of Jesus. As we tarry in His presence, as we read our Bibles, as we put the Word of God down into our soul, we are being transformed. Ephesians three twenty says, "Now unto Him." Who is able unto him who can do infinitely more, hallelujah, than all we can ask or imagine according to his power that works in us. Hey, daddy, we give you praise. You can do exceedingly more than what we imagine or what we ask. Daddy, we worship you. What a mighty God. What a powerful God we serve. We are receptive to you this morning. Lord, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you adoration. Let us begin to declare the faithfulness of our king. Let us tell him in our own words. Look into your life. Look back to your story. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God, we worship you. Look back into your life. See how awesome your king has been. Oh, Lord, Daddy, we appreciate you for who you are. We give you praise for who you are. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Daddy. In your own word, begin to express gratitude. Thank this God. Worship him. Worship him. Exalt his holy name. Daddy, we give you praise. He is a God of covenant. And his covenant he keeps. Is a God, is law, is set fast, love never ceases. In the name of Jesus, He is faithful, He is constant from generation to generation. He will never, He will never lose His power, He will never lose His. his, his is his communion with his people. He would never, he would never fail you. This God is trustworthy. This God is faithful. Ah, daddy, we give you praise. We give you praise. Faithful, faithful, faithful God. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise in the name of Jesus. Second Timothy 2.13 says, if we are faithless, our God remains faithful. And he cannot, he cannot deny himself. Isn't that something we need to sit and just, you know, think about and ponder over and over? This God is faithful. What is it that we are looking up to him for? I am declaring over that situation that your king is faithful. He will never, ever deny himself as he said it he would do it he's not a man to lie he's not a man to back down, to back down he's not a man that he will change and be unconstant and, and and just say oh you know i misspoke as he said it he would do it Thank you, Daddy. Oh, Daddy, we honor you. Daddy, we glorify you. Daddy, we worship you. Excellent Jesus. Excellent Father. Glory be to your holy name. Glory be to your holy name. Honor, adoration be unto you. We join the 24 elders this morning to say you are worthy. You are worthy. You are holy. You are glorious. Holy, holy, 
holy, holy, holy be unto you, Lord. Holy be unto the name of our God. Holy is our King. Holy, righteous is our King. Daddy, we worship you. We worship you. Thank you because you cannot deny yourself. We give you praise. We give you praise as we worship you this morning. I set our thanksgiving to your glory. Pour out yourself into us, O God, that we will never remain the same, O Lord. Pour out yourself into us, O God. We have your nature. We want to be like you. We want to talk like you. We want to move like you. We want to act like you. We want to be like you, Lord. Pour yourself into us, O God. Still overflowing. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for the spirit of the Lord that is on the inside of us. It changes us. It stirs us to do the will of the Lord at all times. In the name of Jesus, we have worshipped. Amen. And amen. And amen. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit. Our topic this morning says, Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. When I was looking at this topic, you know, it is very much in line with our upcoming conference. And we, this topic was given a year ago, even when we didn't even know what, you know, uh, what the, 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 the um, team of this conference was going to be. The Lord has given us this word a year before, and now we're here, our conference is here. We're imagine, we're, we're, we're arrive. We, we, it's time to arise and emerge. We're moving into a new dimension, a new platform, in the newness of life in the Holy Spirit. So, you know, I just want to encourage every one of us. I know too many of us have not registered, but please do not miss this conference. The Lord is doing a new thing. It is our seventh year in EPR, and the Lord has blown our minds. The Lord is doing a new thing. But all of this will be downloaded during the conference, and some of the testimonies, will come during the conference. Please, plan to be there. Separate time to meet with God. God has a word and a plan for you. See you there in Jesus' name. Amen. And back, back into our topic for today, we're looking, we're looking at the prophetic. Because the word arise, shine, for your light has come, is from uh, prophet Isaiah. In the book of Isaiah 60, 1 to 3. I focus on 1 to 4 because I was reading it and everything was coming out. If we were to spend time on that, we're going to be here for the whole day. Because, you know, the season we are is the season of the prophetic. Arise, arise, shine. Arise is an indicator of a move of God. It indicates that God is doing something. You're changing position. You're changing position. There is a change. There is a transformation. You, God is strategically placing you. He's establishing the given authority that he, you, you have in you. He's stirring it up. It is time to arise. It is time to bring forth. It is time to arise. It is time to agree with the word of the Lord. Because when I say arise, and shine, people are like, okay, what's she talking about? It is time to take the word of God and run with it. It is time to take those promises that the Lord has spoken to you in his words, through prophecy, through, you know, vision, what, whichever way God talks to you. And if you have not developed, you know, your spirit man to, the, to, to that level where you hear from God, please stay with the word. You will build it, the word of God, every promise is in the book that we have, the, the, the Bible, every promise is, is yea and amen. Arise and shine, 
find some promises for yourself and begin to run with it. Begin to agree with it. Begin to live by it. That is when you are rising because it is not by might. It is not by power, but by the spirit of the Lord. And verse two of that, of, of, of that verse says, behold, darkness covers the head. Gross darkness, the people. And the, the darkness, you know, the Bible was saying here is the spiritual darkness. A lot of people can't even see beyond their nose. I was, I was looking at how on the 31st, people, you know, just put up some, 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 uh, I mean, some sites. And they, they want to normalize what is evil. They want to normalize that. And children are running around saying it is okay. It is, you know, there is nothing wrong about it. They want to normalize that culture. So that even when they see, when they see, oh, God forbid, when they see a demon, they, they will think it's all joke. But God is still in control. Hallelujah. God is still in control. God is still in control. The Lord will arise on you. That's what the Bible says. And his glory shall be seen through you. God is not worried because there is so much darkness. He has given us that word already. That, that, that look around you. Look at what is going on. You know, he said in John 1, 5, he said, and the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness will not comprehend it. Isn't that, I mean, that is good enough to take to the bank. And the light will shine, no matter the level of darkness, the light of God will shine. The brighter the light becomes, the light of God will shine and the darkness will not be able to comprehend it. People will come to your light. King will come to your brightness, to the rising of your glory. God will always use people to accomplish his time and you are the chosen one. Look into the Bible. God is not looking for a perfect and all ready and all glorious, you know. He will make you there. He wants to start with you from where you are and walk with you to be that purpose and plan and, 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 and walk through you to reach out to others. Let us begin to, to see it in a way where we begin to align with his promises so that we can emerge, we can pursue, we can arise, we can take over. It's walking through you. It's walking through you to reach the generation now and generations to come. Romans 8, 19 says, For the earnest expectation of the creation awaits the manifestation of the children of God. When are we going to make the progress? When are we going to progress or get committed to our commission? Look around you. A lot of people are looking for answers. People are downcast, dejected, depressed, uh, desperate for some form of solution. And that solution is in the light. And that light is, in the, is on the inside of you. It's on the inside of you. Look around. The harvest is great. People are drawn to your light. People are drawn to your light. People are drawn to you because there is something on the inside of you that is special. If you have not worked on it, if you have not studied it, oh, please, sisters, this is the time. This is the time. The darkness around will only make the light look more attractive. Light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot comprehend it. But imagine if there is no light shining. How many more people will be left in the dark, deprived of the plan and purpose of God for their lives? There is plenty of work to be done. The Bible says the harvest is ready. You are the light. You are the illumination. You are the influence to those sitting in the dark. Nations will come to your light. The king will come to your brightness, to the rising of your glory. Let the light of the Lord, let the light of Christ permeate through you and reach out to the world. 
You are the light of the world. A city set upon the hill, you cannot be eating. Let us begin to pray. Let us begin to pray. We're going to thank God for the anointing of newness, anointing of strength, favor, grace, in the name of Jesus. Father, anoint us afresh. Lord, anoint us afresh. Lord, anoint us afresh. Daddy, anoint us afresh in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, anoint us afresh in the name of Jesus. Let men be drawn unto our life. Let our life so shine that the, the world will see it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Isaiah 10, 27 says, you know, uh, in that day, uh, yoke shall be broken. Yoke shall be broken. Let there be light. Let there be light. Let us begin to pray that we will be the light. We will be the salt of the world in the name of Jesus and we will not compromise. We will walk in the law of the Lord. We will walk in the truth of the Lord. We will show forth the glory of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Let us begin to pray. We will show forth the goodness, the glory of the Lord. God, show me how to live large for you. Take my agenda and replace it with your agenda. Redirect my path, oh God. Redirect my path, oh God. Place me where you desire, where you, you have planned for me, where you have proposed for me to be. Psalm 119.105 says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Let us begin to pray that the Lord will show us how to live for him. That the Lord will show himself strong in us. That the Lord will reach out in the name of Jesus. He will permeate the light of God through us, O God, in every of our daily living, every second of our lives, every minute of our life, every hour in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, let us begin to pray that the Lord will bring us in contact with whom he wants us, he wants to see the light through us. In the name of Jesus, God, bring us in contact with the people you want us to help. Connect us with somebody that needs that needs your help, that needs the help of the Lord. They connect us, oh God, with that heart, the, with that harvest that you have prepared, oh God, so that we can, we, can, we can speak the word of the Lord that will bring them into the light, that will bring them into the kingdom of God, that will lead them unto Christ in the name of Jesus. Let us begin to pray that the Lord will use us as an instrument to expand his kingdom in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Mark. 1615 says, go into the world and preach the gospel to everyone, every living thing. In the name of Jesus, Lord, help us, so God. Let us begin to declare that we have reason to shine. We receive faith and boldness to shine. And the authority to walk in the power without being, being, being victimized in the name of Jesus. We begin to walk in power in the name of Jesus. Ephesians 3.16 says, the riches with the power through the Holy Spirit from our inner being, in the name of Jesus. Father, we begin to show forth your power. Father, use our hands, oh God. Use our whole, whole being, oh God, to reach out, oh God. Walk your miracle through us. Walk your miracle through us. Use us as a vessel unto honor. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Baptize us with your anointing. In the name of Jesus. Propel us, oh God, to begin to bring forth no steel back. No more still back in the name of Jesus. Let us begin to pray in any way that we have, you know, you know, because sometimes we, we will be so hot for God and then we are cold. And then, you know, we, we go off and on. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we say no more still back in the name of Jesus. We're going to be consistently hot for you in the name of Jesus. Father, replace our agenda with your soul, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you, Lord. Daddy, we worship you. We worship you, God, as you anoint us, as you propel us to move forward, as you speak your word into our life to go forth and become and manifest 
and emerge and arise. No, we take it, oh God. No more still bad. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. We give you honor and adoration. In Jesus' marvelous name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. And then, you know, in the same vein, I was looking at expanded limits. When it comes to the kingdom of God, your limit is how far you can go with God, which means there is no limit. The Lord can take you beyond your imagination, beyond what you have ever asked or imagined. I was looking at the book of Chronicles, and I noticed that from chapter one through chapter nine, you know, it was just chronology. Oh, this begat that, this begat that. And, you know, it might seem very uninteresting reading uh, Moab begat Bina, Azel begat Aziakam, you know, things like that. But somewhere in the middle was a short but profound two verses appearance of Jabez's story. Jabez, the name was a long, a lifelong label pronounced on him by his own mother. An authority figure over his life that is supposed to bless him. Every time that name Jabez was called, it is a reminder of pain because she said, I bore him in with pain. It is a signal of pain to everyone around him. You can imagine him growing up as a teenager and all he could hear and everyone around him is pain, pain, pain. But despite that long life, I mean, lifelong sigma, he refused. He refused to remain in it. He refused. He, he decided to choose his own path. He decided that he wasn't going to live in pain. He decided that there is something better than what the world, the, the mold, the world is trying to put him into. He decided he was going to arise above that circumstances. The first thing he did was finding his identity in its creator. This tells me that no matter what, the limitation or generational trait or you know the background we can choose to stand with god we can choose to say i am getting out of this i am i have risen and i am shining in that we can choose to stay with god rise above the situation and shine with the glory of god jabez rather than you know, being shy away, rather than shy away from what the circumstances was. That circumstances, that limitation was a propellant. It propelled him to reach out for more. He reached out for more. He asked God for an exponential blessing. He asked God for what would differentiate him. He didn't just ask for blessing. He said, bless me. Indeed, indeed means overflowing. Indeed means I am not going to be tied down with what my background or what people around me feel about me. I am going beyond. I am going above. I am going, I am identifying my, my, my being in him, in his glory. Enlarge my territory that your hands will be with me that you will keep me from evil, that I will not cause pain. And then you know what? The Bible says God granted him what he has requested. The Bible says you get not because you ask not. And in the event, it was recorded that he was more honorable than his brethren. That is First Chronicles 4. First Chronicles 4, 9, and 10. And then the Bible went back to the chronology. You know, that just tells me something like God can stop the order of things for you. 
do what he needs to do with you. And then he can turn it back again. And there are so many testimony. I have seen, you know, people believing for their papers. God find a, a, a program was announced. People got their papers and things went back to what they used to be. There are people, you know, looking for job. And it, it, it's been, there is this particular qualification that will not just let them qualify. God took it out. She got in. She got promoted. And the thing came back. Oh, God can stop any order for you to excel. God can stop anything for you to excel. The same thing God did for Jabez. It was chronology and in two, two verses, God changed his life completely. And then the book went back to what it used to be. What is it that God is telling you to do today? Jabez is an epitome of hope that the final authority over your life is not in the hand of any man, but in the hand of your creator, in what you are ready to fight for, in what limits you are ready to push through, in what limits, in how much you are willing to fight for it. No matter what the circumstances is, no matter what the label over the years has been, God is turning things around for you today. It is your time to arise and shine. God has changed several circumstances. You will not be the first and you will not be the last. In the name of Jesus, Jabez ended up becoming a blessing to his generation. As many that came in contact with him, that was somebody that was, was being called pain. God turned it around. What breakthrough are you looking for? What are you in, in, in need of? It is time to emerge. It is time to arise. It is time to shine. Please do not miss our conference. Invite your friends. Let us begin to pray. We're going to pray, Lord, expand my territory. Lord, expand my territory spiritually, vision wide, ministry, home, business, my work, my career, my family. Bless and expand my territory, oh God. Father, change, turn around every evil circumstances in the name of Jesus. I receive the peace of the Lord that passeth all understanding. I receive the joy that overflows. I receive wisdom. I receive discernment. I receive grace and favor in the name of Jesus to push through every limit. In the name of Jesus, I push through every limit. In the name of Jesus, begin to push through that limit, whatever the world is trying to mold you into, push through your limits in the name of Jesus. Second Peter 1 3 says, His divine power has been given to us. Everything that we need for life, for godliness, through the knowledge of Him who has called us to glory and excellence. Is there a, a excellence? Is there any part of you that you are not feeling that glory or is excellent? It's time to push through. In the name of Jesus, let us begin to pray for a divine appointment. A divine appointment with the purpose and plan of God for our destiny. We receive a divine appointment in the name of Jesus. We declare open doors for divine appointment, for divine relationship, for divine assignment in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I am telling you, Abba 2, 3 says, for the vision is, a, is for an appointed time. It will testify. It will not lie. Though it might seem to linger, it will not be delayed. 
is coming true for you in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for that divine appointment in the name of Jesus. I receive the power, I receive the unction to push through every limitation in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for that divine appointment, divine relationship, divine assignment. I'm, I'm walking in line with your glory. I am walking in line with what you have called me to do. Let us begin to pray. Father, thank you, Lord. Let us pray that God will help us to see through his own eyes. A lot of people are limited because they, 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 they think about what they can achieve based on their education, based on their skills, based on their mindset, based on the resources they have. That's not the right mindset. Let us begin to pray. Lord, help me to see through your eyes. Lord, help me to think beyond my limits. In the name of Jesus, help me to see beyond my limited skills, beyond my education, beyond the limited mindset or my resources. I want to focus on the unlimited, supernatural resources from the glory, from the throne of grace. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I tap into that unlimited, supernatural resources of heaven. In the name of Jesus, open my eyes to oh God. Psalm 119 said, open my eyes that I may see wondrous things. That I may see wondrous things from you, Lord. Help me to see through your eyes, oh Lord. Help me to think beyond, beyond my limitation. Help me, oh God. Help me, oh God, to break through, to push through, to arise, to shine. In the name of Jesus, no limitation, no limitation. Backward never. For whatever, then help me, O oh Lord. Every limitation I destroy by the power in the blood of Jesus. Father, I push through. I will not be limited by my skills. I will not be limited by my education. I will not be limited by the wrong mindset. Father, I begin to pray for favor. I begin to pray for enlargement of heaven. I begin to pray for that supernatural resources, unlimited resources from the throne of grace. In the name of Jesus. Let us begin to thank God for his blessing that make it rich and had no sorrow. Because the, Bible, the, 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 the prayer of Jabez was, bless me, Lord, indeed, till overflowing. Open the windows of heaven, O oh Lord, and pour. Pour your greatness. Pour. Pour your vision. Pour your empowerment. Pour your supernatural uh, 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 virtue into in, in, on the inside of me. Let us begin to pray. Let us begin to pray. Ephesians 1, 3 says, Blessed be the God of our Father, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Let us begin to push this morning in the name of Jesus. Father, your blessing uh, overflows. He make rich and had no sorrow. We tap into it, oh God, as we begin to emerge in the name of Jesus, as we arise this morning to shine in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, help us, Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, let us lift up Pastor Nike. I know the night, we, we, we pray midnight, you know, for, for the conference in Nigeria to get started. But I want us to pray again as a body. Let us lift up that the glory of the Lord will go before her, that the hands of the Lord will be upon her in the name of Jesus, that the grace and the option to minister will be upon her, that the strength of the Lord will uphold her, that the protection of the Lord will keep her in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, thank you for your daughter. Now, Kali Ambuzun, the Hingrabuzun, the Hingrabu, Hungry Buzun, the Kedebuzun, the Kedebuzun, thank you for grace. Thank you for your strength. Thank you for your anointing in the name of Jesus. And Father, we just want to thank you for the church of God. We want to thank you for our nation, the nation of America. Father, have mercy, O oh God. Holy Spirit, take control. In Jesus' marvelous name, we are prayed. Amen. I'm going to hand it over to prayers for the persecuted church. Hi everyone. Um, so I'm gonna be praying for 
the church um, in Mauritania. Um, Mauritania is located in West Africa. Um, and it is a presidential republic. Uh, their president is Mohammed Oloud Abdelaziz, and the um, the main religion is Islam. And their main source of persecution is is Islamic oppression. Their population is 4,540,000, um, and the Christians are at 10,100, which I calculated it is less than 1% of their population. Um, so this state is one of the um, largest persecution, persecutors of Christians. Um, because the country is overwhelmingly Muslim, and they even refer to themselves as the Islamic Republic of Mauritania. Um, in November 2017, the government introduced a new bill to harden up expected sentences for blasphemers, and, and it eliminated all reasons to repeal a death sentence for blasphemy and apostasy and anyone convicted will be automatically sentenced to death even if they repent and christians also face the risk of attacks from militant groups such as al-qaeda and islamic extremists preachers and militants contribute to the radicalization of society um, and they fuel antagonism and hatred toward non-Muslims. So um, we want to pray that every threat against God's people in Mauritania come to naught, according to Isaiah 54, 17, um, that no weapon formed against them shall prosper, and every tongue that rises against them in judgment, the Lord will condemn. And we're also praying that the Lord will begin to open the eyes um, and soften the hearts of the persecutors that they may begin to be converted to Christianity, according to John 12:40. Um, he hath blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts that they should not see nor understand with their heart and be converted and heal them. So we want to pray that he opens their eyes and softens their hearts. And um, we pray that the Lord bring the persecuted Christians of Mauritania out from under the yoke of the harsh laws with his outstretched arms, according to Exodus 6.6. 6. Therefore, the tell the Israelites, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians and deliver you from their bondage. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with mighty acts of judgment. And lastly, lastly we ask the Lord um, that the Lord will remind him that he is with them and that they will be strengthened to continue in their resolve to stand for Christ in the face of danger according to Isaiah fifty seventeen, Because the sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know I will not be put to shame. Let us thank God for these answered prayers. And uh, Pastor Titi, it's back to you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, Father, thank you. Thank you. As your daughter has prayed, we believe that God is doing a lot. He's doing something. He's tearing up something. He's tearing up. He's tearing up in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you because you will perfect all that concerns your people in Jesus' name. I just want to thank everyone for being part of today's session. The time you are spent in praying definitely make a great difference. We thank you. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us on all social media, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. 
It's always a pleasure having you and looking forward to seeing you next week. God bless you and thank you. So sisters, good morning again. Good morning.